Erev Tov Chabrim. My name is Stephen ben Danun, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Today, out of Israel, we get a report from Arut Sheva, Israel's national news, <clears throat> that says, Expert, missing plane probably hijacked and crashed. That's the, the synopsis of Tuvia Levne in the article that Arut Sheva, uh, where they interviewed him. He's the uh, former head of the El Al... Um, uh, airlines and discuss the mystery of the disappearing Malaysia airliner flight 307 with them and says <clears throat> in the report there while anything is possible the likelihood that the plane was being held and prepared for the use of a terror weapon as rumors that have been running rampant over the past few days um, several days state is very unlikely uh, much more likely, he said, was that the plane crash or explosion that occurred after a hijacking attempt, and it could take a few seconds for a terrorist to invade the cockpit and for a mishap to occur and for the pilot to lose control under the pressure of the moment. Over, over a week after the air traffic controllers lost track of it, there are still no indications of the fate, uh, fate of the Malaysia Airliners Flight 370, which disappeared with 239 passengers on board. The plane's disappearance is a unique situation that naturally has had many conspiracy theories, uh, Levney goes on to say. Uh, but looking at the facts, conclusion, I come to this, that, that there was a hijacked attempt which preceded a breakup of the plane. Then he went on to suggest that the plane more than likely either broke up over a very vast part of the ocean that not many people are around, or possibly it could have fell into a remote jungle somewhere. However, that doesn't seem to line up with the report, news reports that there was pinging on the towers four to six hours after the flight goes missing from the radar. Therefore, the plane still was airborne. So if a fatal a crash happened moments after the hijacker took over the plane, then you would think that the plane went down exactly where it was hijacked at. Doesn't seem really to line up. In fact, today, speaking with a sister here in the United States, her son had an interesting thought that he expressed with his mother. He's a 36-year-old young man, won't reveal his name, but he comes to his mother even before these news articles begin to appear about uh, the possibility of the plane being used for a terror weapon. And he said to his mom, he said, the flight that is missing, the Malaysian flight, he says, it didn't crash. It was hijacked. He went on to say, as his mom asked him, what about the passengers? Don't you think that there'll be a negotiation for the passengers soon? He said, no, mom, there'll be no negotiations for the passengers. You'll never hear about them again. In fact, he said the plane is going to be used as a terror weapon. And when she asked him further about that, she says, what do you mean a terror weapon? He said, they're gonna load it with explosives, mom. And she said, where will it go? He said, it'll come here, the United States. Well, that's a rather sobering thought, needless to say. And we can't say for sure exactly what this will be. Maybe it's so, maybe it's not. We pray that it doesn't happen, that's for sure. And as far as the young man, he said to his mother, I don't know why I know these things. I just know it. There's something inside of me that has let me know that this is what happened. Well, shortly after he gave this revelation to his mother, then news came out that it was a possible hijacking and that indeed the plane would be used as a terror weapon. Not really sure. It seems like Israel is also trying to quieten and down some of this uh, fear because it does bring fear and panic in a lot of people when you think that a hijacked airliner could be loaded with explosives and sent to a part of the world that certainly doesn't need that type of calamity. And other news that we have also, um, Brother Paul Begley on his uh, weekly, uh, uh, or actually daily uh, broadcast on YouTube re is reporting that the Pope has been invited to the United States Congress to speak on the floor there to the Congress members there. As he put it, it's awfully strange. A Pope for the first time coming to speak at the government in the United States like this? Well, Brother Paul, we have to realize one thing, and that is the flag, the two keys on the flag, represent both uh, spiritual and temporal power. He intends to take over the governments of the world. That's one thing that we know for sure. 
Um, and finally, in, in another bit of news here that was very interesting, uh, to say the least, is the... Um, also one of the most politically sensitive. It was reported today about the Israel Temple Mount. More and more Jews are wanting to ascend the Temple Mount, and it's causing a great, big, a great deal of controversy on the Temple Mount because the Muslims don't like it. There are several Jews that are afraid, or, uh, several organizations of, of Orthodox Jews that do fear the inevitable, but nonetheless, there are those that are getting braver by the day and know that Israel does have a right to rebuild the third temple on the Temple Mount. My only fear is, is that the Vatican is actually using some of the temple treasures that they hold in the catacombs as a carrot to dangle before Israel in order to force a two-state solution. Yes, my brothers, my Jewish brothers, sisters, the Vatican would like to see you build the third temple as well, but they don't mean any good by it. That's one thing for sure. I'm Stephen Bendenun with Israeli News Live. God bless you and good evening.